improve hearing loss and balance problems. And in addition, as a clinical ear care specialist, I remove um, infected debris, um, discharge, and of course, impacted earwax from the ear canals of clients. So we have here a gentleman who attended with bilateral D hard impacted earwax. Um, he felt as though his impaction was worsened after he tried some ear candles. So ear candles also sometimes, well previously used to go by the name of hoppy ear candles and the word hoppy derives from a North American tribe who were, according to the candle manufacturers, using hoppy um, candles for centuries. However, the Hoppy tribe um, actually took legal action against these ear candling manufacturers because they completely deny that they've used um, such candles for treatment of earwax and they've requested um, that the name Hoppy is no longer associated with ear candles. Um, however, I still think, well in the UK at least, um, a lot of people do call ear candling Hoppy ear candles. So there's a bit of history, a bit of uh, trivial knowledge for you. Um, so what I've done there, um, I've installed some olive oil earwax drops because this wax was really impacted and um, that just softens up the wax and you can tell by the colour of the wax, it's quite dark, it's oxidised so it's been in the ear for at, at least, um, I would say, minimum six months up to a year and when the wax is impacted, so either through use of cotton buds or ear candles, it can adhere to the eardrum itself and so what I'm doing here, I'm on the posterior medial canal wall and I'm just trying to peel away some of that skin. I've now gone inferiorly to the bottom to try and lift some of this wax um, beyond the ishmus, which is a narrowing very close to the eardrum. It's a little trench there and um, the patient was tolerating this really well actually and I'm now going um, superiorly so to the top part of the eardrum trying to just release some of this impacted wax slowly, almost peeling it off the eardrum. Um, the oil definitely helps because the oil provides some lubrication. And the secret is really, it's just to be very slow and gentle with your movements. You don't want to go in all guns blazing, gun high, because remember the patient is awake. There's no local anesthesia or general anesthetic used in this procedure. So the patients are always awake and therefore they're always susceptible to discomfort or pain caused by the procedure. So I'm just trying to get a good suction grip there. Um, again, I'm superiorly, I'm just trying to gently get a suction grip and elevate, retract this wax, peel it um, from the eardrum and it's coming off in small pieces. Um, again, you can see at the top of the eardrum there, it's really is lodged. Um, that's the attic of the eardrum. Um, and uh, also, this is the patient's right ear, so on the right hand side, we call that the anterior recess. There's generally a little trench, a little cravat there where wax, wax can embed and really get stuck um, inside. And again, just going to the bottom of the, the ear wax here, inferiorly, getting a suction grip and gently wriggling it. Um, might be a good opportunity for me to talk about ear candling and the kind of proposed science um, behind its use. So ear candling, um, so it's a candle made up of beeswax with a hollow centre. And the idea is you have the patient laying down with the ear that they're treating um, horizontal facing towards the ceiling and you light the candle. And because the candle is hollow, it, the theory is it's almost like a chimney effect. So the air inside the ear um, heats up, the air then rises and as it rises it provides a suction effect so wax comes out and quite often if you have ear candling done by a therapist or beautician at the end of the procedure they actually unravel the candle and show you the debris inside the, the hollow center and they claim that's earwax but actually scientifically it's been proven that is not earwax that's actually the wax from the ear candle itself. Um, ear candling can be very dangerous because um, as in this patient's case it's just further impacted the earwax and there has been instances where hot wax has fallen through the hollow centre and landed and perforated the eardrum so please do stay well away from ear candling, there's no clinical evidence and if anything it's just going to cause you more 
um, trauma and um, exacerbate your symptoms if ever you use that. So we finished with the right ear, we've now moved over to the left ear. The wax isn't, um, well, it is impacted on the eardrum, but you can't visualize that at the moment because th there is more wax in this ear. So some of the wax is more what we call lateral near to the ear canal entrance. The wax is also a bit stickier here. So I am uh, managing to remove a few small segments uh, using suction. So the suction probe that I'm using is called a Zollner suction probe. It's the standard suction probe and it has a diameter of two millimeters. Uh, there are other suction probes used for earwax removal. Um, the other one is called a McGill um, suction probe and that's got a, a, a diameter, an aperture of three millimeters. So that can be quite powerful though, sometimes too powerful. And also um, if you've got someone with a narrow ear canal entrance or um, even further in, um, they have a bit of stenosis. So stenosis is a narrowing uh, of the ear canal due to chronic ear infections. A McGill suction probe, um, the ear canal itself wouldn't be able to accommodate it. It's just too large. Also, the McGill suction probe being three millimeters um, in terms of the distal tip, the aperture, it's very noisy as well. Um, even a standard size Zollner suction probe is, can be quite noisy. So I've only used that in rare instances and the next time I do use that, I will make reference to that in my video so to, to see whether you can actually observe the size difference by viewing um, the video itself. So um, I'm just making again, um, I think many of you know now the technique I adopt, I get a suction grip and I make gentle circles, trying to loosen and tug this wax um, and extract it from the ear canal. Again, the patient has wax lodged in that anter anterior recess. So this is the left ear, so the anterior recess is on the left hand side. And you're probably able to see there, I'm going back for that same point. Um, if we can release the wax from the anterior recess, and quite typically um, the wax can just loosen and uh, dislodge and it comes out in a big piece but the wax is quite sticky so you'll see in a moment I am going to instill some olive oil drops before I do so I'm just um, trying to vacuum some wax um, inferiorly you can see that the view there we've got an ex excellent view of really kind of zoomed in um, so I can see what I'm doing with an endoscope because we're viewing on a 2D screen, uh, we don't get what we call uh, binaural stereoscopic vision, which you, you do get with an operating ENT microscope. And stereoscopic or binocular vision provides you with depth perception. So, one of the limitations of the endoscopic technique um, is that you don't get that depth perception via binocular vision because you're, you're just viewing on a 2D screen. However, that doesn't mean you can't um, obtain depth perception using an endoscope because there are monoscopic cues. Um, the most obvious one is um, if you, if you, if you want to get deep wax, you just go in further with the endoscope and the, that provides you itself with depth perception. Also with the ear canal, there is two bends. And actually this client, you saw the second bend there. And by knowing where the bends are, you can actually judge how deep you are in the ear. Uh, also, um, the shadow effects as well. So the shadow effects pro uh, provide the specialist um, an idea of whereabouts they are um, within the the ear canal. So, but um, yeah. So with with an endoscopic approach, it is important never to do the procedure too far away. You don't want the suction probe too far away from the tip of the endoscope because then you do you will lose some depth perception there. So I've just instilled some olive oil drops. The wax is still quite impacted on the eardrum. Um, you can see it there. I can see the um, posterior aspect of the eardrum, the bluey um, kind of appearance. But anteriorly, it is literally stuck, um, stuck like glue. And um, again, I'm just using the, um, the standard size on the suction probe uh, here. The patient's not finding it too loud. If he did, I would have actually resor resorted to the fine end. But the fine end wouldn't have been powerful enough and you can just see that I've dislodged that piece. Once more I'm going back in with the standard Zollner suction probe. I'm trying to release some wax here from the in, uh, inferior recess. So you don't only have an anterior recess. So the anterior recess is the trench, the, the, the cravat um, to the front part of the ear canal but often there's also what we call an inferior recess. So it's like a trench at the base of the eardrum where the annulus is. 
Um, so here we're just approaching the attic. Um, we can also call that the superior part of the eardrum. And I've just dislodged another piece of wax there. By this stage, the patient's symptoms have resolved. Um, he was able to hear very well indeed, but it was tolerating the procedure very well. So it was, I, I thought it best, trying to get as much wax out as I can. And again, there's a small piece of wet wax really um, impacted and embedded on the attic. Um, the attic can also be called the past placida. Uh, pars placida. So the pars placida is the top part of the eardrum and that's a very thin part, um, a thin membrane. And that part, if you do have what we call eustachian tube dysfunction, the eardrum retracts. It's typically the pars placida that retracts. The, the, the remaining part of the eardrum, so the main body, we call that the pars tensor and there's some muscle fibres there. So that provides a bit of strength. Um, but so whenever you're working at the top part of the eardrum, you do have to be very careful uh, and gentle. You don't want to be perforating the pars placida because it is a thinner part of the eardrum. There's just some wax here, um, medially on the posterior canal wall. Um, we do have to be careful here because the ear canal is composed of bone and a thin sheet of skin literally coating it, so it's very sensitive. This is what we call residual wax. Um, Wax is normal, it's healthy in the ear, it's not occluding. Um, it's just, as I said, it's just staining the ear canal a bit. But again, I thought, let's, let's see if I can just get a bit more off here. Um, in a moment as well, you'll see that I will be retracting some skin. Sometimes if you retract some skin that's located um, kind of further away from the eardrum near the entrance, and here we are, by lifting this skin, which is here it's almost crusted, um, as we peel it, it will um, kind of um, remove this wax that's impacted on the ear canal, but the skin actually toughens at this point here, um, so it wasn't lifting that wax and it, the, tin actually, the skin actually just teared off. Um, there's a bit more skin here, you can see we're right near, near the entrance now, and I'm just gently peeling this layer of skin, and I am using a fine end gorge now, so a fine end gorge. It's an attachment that we um, place uh, within the standard zone with suction probe. So the, the fine end itself, it's narrow in diameter, so it's less invasive, it's quieter. Um, oops, sorry, my phone's just gone there. Um, and if you do come in contact with the bony part of the, ear, of the eardrum or indeed the ear, um, ear canal, it's, it's not as painful for the patient. There's a still image of all the wax removed. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, it is a Saturday, um, I'm in the clinic and I've just got my phone ringing, so I will return that call, although it's a Saturday. Um, I hope everyone's keeping well and safe, uh, wherever you are. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos on YouTube, please do subscribe and um, select the bell icon so you can get notified as and when I upload new videos. And if you're on Facebook, please do follow, like the page, leave comments and share the video. And hopefully I'll upload a video um, in the next couple of days. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Bye.